I believe wholeheartedly, as we talk about the Cardinal success story of the mid-80s, there's a lot of people that get a lot of credit, and they deserve it. Jack Clark, Ozzie Smith, Willie McGee, Whitey Herzog, uh, the, Joaquin Andujar, uh, so many talented players, John Tudor. But we do not have a 101-win season that year if it were not for the work of Jeff Lottie with his 19 saves anchoring that team. And Jeff, as you think back on, on that season in 1985, uh, you'd been a starter throughout your minor league career. It's your first chance to really be the guy, the closer. Uh, Whitey Herzog trusted you, felt like uh, you were going to be that guy. I'm, I'm assuming somewhere along the line you learned a lot from the guy that we lost from the year before, Bruce Souter, and that he had an impact on you being a closer. I just remember the first part of the season when we were, Souter had left it left, and Neil Allen came in, and we had a little rough start at the beginning, and we were looking for some help, and I figured, okay, it's time for me to step up, so I gave it my best shot, and we ended up here. We were asked to be, the bullpen by committee became such a force that late in the year, we were all asked to be a part of a photo shoot. And uh, do you remember uh, much of that story? Yeah, so Sports Illustrated wanted to do a story on me. And uh, they wanted me to do it by myself. And the problem with that was that it was a bullpen by community. It wasn't all done by myself. So I wouldn't do the story without them. And so That's exactly right. I remember, and, and I still remember to this day, that Jeff uh, insisted. He said, you cannot do a story. I mean, you cannot take my picture unless I get Ken Daly and Bill Campbell and Pat Perry and Rick Hort in this photo, and so we got in this photo. Uh, later, they cropped us out. I'm not kidding, they did, <laughs> but they got the last laugh. But, but Jeff, that's, that, that's the kind of teammate uh, Jeff, Jeff Lottie was for us. Uh, Tom Lawless, let me ask you about a uh, little bit uh, about, uh, I guess I should ask you about uh, managing uh, in, at the big league level, getting a chance to do that last year. I know it was uh, well-deserved and, and great to see you doing that. I'm sure that's an experience that, that, uh, that you were really looking forward to trying? Well, I learned a lot, you know, especially in 85, because I just sat around and watched all these guys play. I had the, I had the <laughs> best seat in the house. I mean, nobody got hurt. We were just constantly winning. Uh, we were exciting. So for me, it was just a learning experience watching Whitey just, uh, you know, run the ball games, And really kind of propelled me into staying in the game of baseball. And I got, I got an opportunity last year to, to go up there and manage for uh, 25 days. It was a lot of fun. Had a good time. And uh, maybe someday it'll happen again. Uh, what are some of your mem memories, Andy, of, of that club? You know, I, I just think uh, more than anything else, I remember the freedom of just playing the game. Uh, you know, I think the one of the... Uh, I remember Whitey um, one day... Early, maybe it was May, it was early in the season when he was just joking around with the players before the game, and he, he always would kid with the, with the team and say, listen, hey, please, do whatever you can, do not let me manage this game until the eighth or ninth inning, because I'll screw it up. <laughs> and what he was really trying to say is, if we play our best and we, we played our, our, our ability, uh, he'll have the lead in the eighth or ninth inning, and he, and he wouldn't screw it up. And the fact is, we never blew a lead that season until the game six of uh, the 1995 World Series. And he just allowed us to go out and, and I think maybe, I mean, Whitey would probably talk tonight for a few minutes. <laughs> um, that he basically had probably less signs that season than any other season he ever managed because he knew that uh, we had the ability just to go out and, and run teams into a loss. One of the guys that came up that season late was Todd Worrell. Uh, Todd, you'd been a, a starter in the minor leagues, and all of a sudden you're getting your chance at a young age to be a clo closing in games that were important in September and then October. What, take us back to what was going on in your mind back then. Well, it was exciting to be there. Um, you know, every young minor league player's uh, dream is to get to the big leagues, and uh, I found myself there not in the way I was expecting to be there. I thought I'd get there as a starter and uh, ended up, as you all know, as a, as a stopper. But uh, even going back before that, I think the thing that helped me the most was uh, how J um, Jim Fergosi, uh, Lee Thomas, and that group, when I was still uh, in AAA, you know, presented their idea to me and um, wanted to know if I wanted to do that. 
And just the confidence that I built through that month, I was down there for about a month and a half and got called up the tail end of August, but I knew the minute I went out on the mound, the first time they put me out there in the seventh or eighth inning, it wasn't even a safe situation. They just wanted to see if I could pitch in the tail end of the game. And uh, I knew when I walked off the mound, that's what I should be doing. And I uh, continued to do very well to the end of that, uh, to August, and found myself in the big leagues. I'm going to ask these next two guys a little bit about two guys that were important to the su success of the team. Uh, and I'm going to start with, with Ken Daly, our bullpen coach, uh, who uh, was such a big part. We talk about Cardinal tradition. You hear the names George Kissel uh, and certainly Red Shandings all the time. But uh, one of the other names of a guy who has just had such an impact, he's a guy that helped Yadier Molina at a young age. He helped Mike Matheny refine his skills as a catcher, but he was also the bullpen coach for years, Ken, uh, our friend Dave Ricketts, and he kind of ran the show out there in the bullpen, didn't he? He kept a close eye on all the baseballs. Uh, Dave had this thing, the gout, and he used to cut his toe, big toe out of his shoe because it would hurt. And we would bounce balls on the turf right by his toes. <laughs> <laughs> he had choice. I wouldn't do that. You he did had, that? He had choice vernacular for us, but, uh, <laughs> you know, Dave was in charge, and, uh, you know, Dave had a quiet leadership about him, and when he spoke something to you, you knew it was gospel and you needed to pay attention. But part of what we always knew is when to be ready, too. Like in Chicago, when you had ketchup and mustard on your uniform and we had to go in the game? <laughs> yeah, I was ready. Uh, Ken's talking about a time I was, uh, thanks, Ken, for bringing that up. Uh, <laughs> I was warming up on the left side of the bullpen closest to the, uh, to the railing, and there was a fan, quote unquote, uh, for the Cubbies, uh, who was lining up ketchup, ketchup and mustard packets, and he was squirting them on me as I was warming up. And, uh, Whitey wasn't really sure what we were doing out there in the bullpen, but thanks, Ken, for, for sharing that. Uh, <laughs> Pat, Pat was also part of the bullpen, and we, of course, don't say everything uh, about what goes on in the bullpen, but I do want to ask you uh, about the manager. I want you to, uh, to talk a little bit about Whitey Herzog, and, and as you came up to the big leagues and saw him, the way he kind of manipulated his talent and put people in right situations, I think you and I are very similar in that, where you know he wouldn't use us where we'd get hammered, but hurt, <laughs> where we'd hurt the team, but he'd use us in the right spot, but he was really a, a master at that. I grew up a Cardinal fan, and uh, reality was uh, kind of off the charts that I was uh, a member of the St. Louis Cardinals, and uh, just a couple days into it, we were in New York. Thank you. <laughs> My chair keeps turning to Ricky, and I, I feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm not trying you to sit no, on your lap. No, but, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> You're a good-looking guy, though. Thank you. That... <laughs> <laughs> I took one of my pills. <laughs> Take another one. <laughs> I don't know if it's lamps or that blue pill. Hey, hey hold on to me, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, Joaquin had uh, gotten roughed up in the, by the second inning, and uh, I found myself... Uh, pitched in front of 50,000 people where I was used to about 500 and uh, quite an experience, quite a day. But uh, yeah, Whitey, uh, the confidence Whitey showed in uh, each reliever and, and, and kind of put you in a place where you're going to have your, your best chance to succeed. It was uh, uh, just a great feeling, his confidence. Uh, uh, you know, you, you work so hard to get there and you, and you hope uh, you're going to be able to stay and it, it was a great feeling to be a Cardinal. It was a great feeling to have some success early, and uh, it's a great feeling to be here tonight. These guys are brothers to me, and I'm thankful for uh, th the work these guys did to get me a ring. So I appreciate Jeff Lottie, Tom Lawless, Andy Van Slyke, Todd Worrell, Ken Daly, and Pat Perry. Let's hear it for our first round. <laughs> 